Hello and welcome to the presentation of my ice form that I call Hexafrost. It's called Hexafrost because it has six water lanes where ice can generate. Uh, what's important is that uh, every water block has a non-water block next to it, so ice can generate. Also, the water lanes have sky access. So I transport the ice via an octuple piston extender array into the storage area at the end. So the octuple piston extender array pushes the ice into this area here, then it gets pushed down, then it gets further pushed along and upwards with this triple piston extender and into the main storage area. Um, of course there's the chance that more than three ice generate in a lane and it wouldn't be able to transport it all over but it's not the efficiency is not really decreased. Um, the clock uh, that I momentarily have dis disabled is set to f about 50 seconds and the chance that four or more um, yeah, ice blocks generate in the, the same strip is about 1% and the chance that the next time that if an uh, ice block would uh, remain behind uh, uh, the generation of a, a water uh, ice block yeah, is hindered is only uh, below 20%. So in total you lose only 0.2% uh, efficiency by only having uh, three pistons that push down the blocks. Um, there's only three pistons that push it down because you have the push limit. Uh, if I would have a fourth then I would get into trouble with the pistons and yeah, essentially there would be the chance that the octuple piston extender could break and I can't really um, yeah, avoid that by the nature of the powering. So yeah, the sky access on the six lanes of course makes it very difficult to power this, um, this whole uh, contraption because at this area you only have two separate um, redstone lines that have to power essentially eight spots and yeah, I have to use a lot of tricks and yeah, f obviously from the bottom I can't power it, uh, you can't attach uh, a redstone uh, block on top of a piston that doesn't work if you, uh, yeah, you might know that and yeah, I only use those uh, pistons at the bottom to update those pistons here um, to, yeah, to activate them via butt power. Okay, I guess then uh, let's see it in action. Uh, let's clear it first in real time. So of course we wouldn't be able to push all the pistons out. Just a demonstration that it works reliable. Okay, before I want to show a slow motion of the farm and explain a little bit how it works in detail the powering, I want to show the redstone in the back and as you can see it's not the tiniest of all farms 
because I need a lot of separate redstone lines for example that's the area under the water and the ice and those pistons that are extracted are these, those yeah call it cooling rods where the um, yeah the, that's essentially the non-water block that that you need for the ice to generate any of those have to be powered separately from the other pistons uh, yeah also I have to power the octopal piston in also from from below for the retraction I try to make it as compact as possible I had to p rebuild the farm in total three times and it's already a lot better than the first version I reused a lot of circuits now but I guess there's still room for improvement um, but yeah not too interesting I guess um, what else? So the rates of the farm. Uh, you might have noticed the counter at the right. Um, I kept track with a command block set up here. Uh, ran above two hours now uh, this clock, and yeah, with those 15 long line, I get about 1175 ice per hour. Yeah. So the good thing is this farm is easily expandable. If you want to, just have to add repeaters at the end of each of those redstone dust lines here, 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 and so on. Okay, then let's see the octopal piston extender array that you might have noticed I'm very proud of. One last time in action, and this time in slow motion. So there it is, and let's slow it down even more that I could talk about it while it works. Um, okay, yes, now it started. Okay, I guess now it started. So at first the ice blocks are pushed from below, so they could, can be further transported by those other pistons. And any moment comes the last one. Here they come. And immediately after that, the octopal piston extender ray starts. Uh, as you might notice, the extracting pistons aren't powered directly, I use a little trick here. So they are butt powered um, and the piston behind it essentially updates the piston uh, that comes next. So at this, after this two wide gap uh, I had to slow it down a little bit, you might notice. It's because of the direct power for this piston here. And then I had to use the trick that is directional, by the way. So it only works in one direction, uh, in two directions, um, with those torches. So the update order yeah, makes it possible to retract those two pistons at once. Yeah, and so and then after that, it's a lot of butt powering and updating involved. Um, okay, as you can see, the piston comes up here. That essentially prevents updates from the ice because next I have to uh, butt power those pistons here. And yeah, they get updated from below. But those can't be updated because if they would extract, if this uh, line depowers, both would instantly retract and then this piston would be two blocks away and unreachable. So yeah, that's the trick I had to use here to prevent water updates. Uh, yeah, next, yeah, those go down. And now I want to get those pistons back. But if I would, uh, yeah, I have to power this line again. And if I would update those pistons here they would also up to those pistons and that's why I have to extract those pistons so those pistons can't extract and then I can retract it and move those pistons back so that's a lot of trickery for this part where I only have those two lines yeah and after that it's pretty much straightforward uh, 
retraction one of the another um, yeah but powering still in this area and updating wire pistons from below so gas becomes obvious why I have so much uh, different uh, lines from the bottom for example I have to power those pistons here in the last water lane in total six times to give updates prevent updates and so on and so on so it's yeah really yeah, it was fun to build and guess the farm doesn't make too much sense for most people but I mean it's like a like a big door it was just a nice challenge to build it and to have the bragging rights to have the yeah fastest or whatever farm okay then let's speed it up a little bit so I can see the rest but still a bit slower than game time yeah, four times faster so it's pretty much straightforward also learn a lot about redstone uh, essentially um, I couldn't use two tick signals only three tick signals because um, when I used two tick signals there was some very weird redstone behavior that I yeah, can't, c couldn't really fix and so it's a little bit slower now uh, in total it takes 9.3 seconds from uh, from the first pistons that extract until the water is fully regenerated and the clock is at the moment at 51 seconds so you have uh, about 83 percent of the time where ice can generate and yeah okay that's I guess it if I can remember correctly then I hope you enjoyed the video goodbye